Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at exponential equations. Now you might notice that I have the word linear and the word exponential here, and that's because we already know how to use one type of an equation, and that is a linear equation. We spend the first half of Algebra 1 really focusing on linear equations and seeing how we can represent situations, graphs, tables with a linear equation. But now we're gonna sort of switch gears and we're gonna focus now on a new type of equation and that is exponential. But what's really nice about exponential and linear equations is that they both have a lot of similarities but real major differences. And so in this video, we'll take a look at what those generic forms look like and how we can write out an exponential equation. Now, before we jump into that, I do want to review what a linear equation is. And remember that for our linear equation, we have our generic form of y equals mx plus b. And that right there is our general form for the equation where m and b are two parameters that we want to make sure we identify. Now you might have forgotten, and that's okay, but our B term here, that represents our zero term, our starting point. I'm going to write that out as our y-intercept. That is what that B term represents in terms of graphing. Where is it crossing that y-axis, or where is the graph starting? Now that's the B term. But we also see that there is an M term as well. And the M term for us, again, has also a bunch of different names we can use. We could call it the growth or the growth factor or the rate of change. But for me, I'm gonna call that the slope. And that is again, in thinking of that line that we graph, it's how the graph is changing over time. Those are the two major components for a linear equation. M represents slope, B represents the y-intercept. Now, we have that generic form for our linear equation, and we also have a generic form for the exponential equation. And you're gonna see some similarities, but then there are gonna be some real differences that I wanna draw your attention to so we understand how each one is used for a different case. So for the exponential equation, our generic form for an equation is y equals a times b to the x power. Now you'll notice that they both start off with y equals and they both involve an x as their input. We see on the linear equation that x is being multiplied by our m term or our slope. But in the exponential equation, x is actually in the exponent position. It's not just being multiplied by the slope, x is now an exponent. And we see that we have an a and a b term here. Now you might be thinking that b is also going to represent the y-intercept or the starting point, and you would be incorrect. In this case, b here with the exponential equation, that's actually going to represent for us the multiplier. Now you can think of the multiplier kind of like slope, but really what I want you to refer to with multiplier is really the rate of change. How is your exponential equation changing? What is it being multiplied by? Whatever that number is that's in that B position, that is your multiplier. As you move from one output to the next, you're gonna see that that multiplier is the common ratio that's being used. Now that's what B represents. It's our rate of change, it's our multiplier. And we also have that A term as well. Now the A term is going to be very similar to what this B term over here represented. A for our exponential equation, again, has a lot of different ways we can describe it. Some people call it the starting point. Some people call it the zero term. In my case here, I'm actually going to refer to that as the y-intercept, okay? So I hope you can see that for both graphs here, for both equations here, we have the y-intercept, we have the starting point. For linear equations, that is the B term at the end of the equation. For the exponential equation, that's the A term, it comes first. 
That tells you where you start and then your rate of change in linear equations, that's your slope. In exponential equation, that's your multiplier. That's highlighted by being the term that's next to your x variable. Now what I'd like to do now is I'd like to give you two examples, one of each, and see how both of them are related to each other, but then how they differ from each other as well. And so to do that, I'm gonna create a linear equation that we can look at. So the linear equation that I wanna focus on is y equals 4x plus two. And right there we see that with that linear equation, we have a y-intercept or a starting point at two and that our slope is changing by four. So we're adding four as we move along. What I also wanna do for this is I wanna create a quick x, y table just so we can look at some inputs and some outputs so we can really understand how linear equations work. I'm gonna start my x table here at zero and then move through one, two, three. And then I wanna show you how we go from the linear equation to a table. And so our zero term here is our starting point. It's our y-intercept. Remember that when we're finding the zero term for a linear equation, it's that b term. It's our y-intercept. So I see here that my zero term starts at two. Now our slope is four. 4x, we see that 4 is attached to the x. That means as I move through this table, we are going to be adding 4 from one output to the next. So since I start with 2, my first term then will become a 6. My next term will become a 10. The one after that will become 14. We see for linear equations, there's a steady growth. We are constantly adding four. We're adding the same number every time. That table there represents our linear equation. Now for the exponential equation, let's create a similar equation, just like with our linear one. The equation that I wanna look at is y equals two parentheses four to the x power. And you're gonna see that there are some similarities there. Notice that I chose my y-intercept, my a term, to also be two, very similar to how I had my linear graph start. And my slope over here was four. I'm choosing my multiplier to be positive four as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an xy table for our linear, sorry, for our exp exponential equation to show how they are similar, but how they are different. My x values are also gonna be from zero to three. And just like our zero term over here was a positive two, the zero term here will also be positive two. Now what's gonna happen is, and what's different for exponential equations, is that as I move from one output to the next, we are not going to be adding by four. We call this rate of change for an exponential equation a multiplier because that is what we are doing with that four. We are multiplying by four as we move through that table. So my zero term started out as a positive two. My first term will be two times four, which is eight. The next term will be eight times four, which is 32, followed by my four, third term here, which will be 108. And I wanna draw your attention to the fact that the third term for our linear equation was 14, but the third term in our exponential equation is 108. Notice that these both started out with the same y-intercept. They both started out here with a value of positive two but the exponential equation grew more quickly, okay? It grew exponentially. That is the difference between exponential and linear over there, okay? It's not a steady growth. It's not adding four every time. Now we're multiplying by four 
these outputs are gonna get very large very quickly, okay? And that's how we represent our linear and our exponential equations in a table. And I hope that you can clearly see that there are some big similarities with those two generic forms, but there are also some differences. And in the next couple of videos, we will explore exponential equations a lot. We will look at graphs. We will look at word problems or situations. We'll look at more tables and we're gonna determine these two big components every single time. Our A term, which is our y-intercept or our zero term, and our B term, which is our multiplier. If you're able to get your y-intercept and your multiplier, you'll be able to create an equation for an exponential function every time. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.